Hi everybody, this is Lisa Goodell, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. And before I get started, I have a special announcement. It is giveaway time. I have reached 500 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much if you have subscribed. And so I'm going to be doing a giveaway. And what I'm going to do is give out some samples from the new catalog, as you can see here. The first place winner will get three in color ribbon samples. We have boho blue, we have moody mauve, and we have pebbled path. And those, each one of those samples will be 12 inches long. And I'm also going to give out some of these gems. You're gonna get one row of adhesive back solid gems and one row of the 2023 to 25 in color dots. And also, you will get one hand stamped card using a new stamp set by me. I'm also going to have four second place winners. So please go to the description of this video to get all of those details, including the rules, and make sure you sign up by April 25th, 2023. And for today's video, I'm going to show you a project using some products from our new 23-24 annual catalog that will be going live for customers on May 2nd, 2023. Demonstrators were able to pre-order some items in the catalog, and so I'm going to be using some of those things today. I did do a live the other day showing an unboxing of everything that I ordered in the pre-order. And so you can go back and look at that if you want. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you um, some of the products really fast. Um, today I'm going to be um, doing the Countryside Inn Suite Collection. And that includes uh, this stamp set called Countryside Corners. And this is actually just one stamp. You can see it here. Um, it has cute cut corners. And then there's all kinds of patterns making uh, the shapes. There's stitched lines, there's polka dots, there's flowers, all kinds of stuff. And then with that is this, the die set. And the die set goes right with that. You can see it has the shapes, so you can cut out each one of the shapes. And then in the very center, there's this little uh, tag die that's super cute uh, that has little ribbon ends on it. And so that can be for uh, little things. So that's going to go with that. And then also I'm going to use a cup of tea stamp set. That is a stamp set that's retiring out of the last annual catalog. I'm going to be using one of the new colors, boho blue ink for our project. Um, also a part of that countryside in set or countryside in suite besides the dies and the stamp set which that is a bundle and that's actually called the countryside corners bundle um, besides that there it also comes with some dsp some designer series paper um, 12 by 12 paper and the colors in that are balmy blue boho blue misty moonlight and night of navy so let me show you some of these colors we're going to be using this sheet here um, which I think is beautiful. And then here's the back side. We're going to also be using this sheet here that has uh, bunny rabbits on it. And then here's the other side. We're also going to be using this side in our project. And here's the next one, some more stripes. Uh, some of these stripes would be gorgeous for um, manly cards, for masculine cards. Here's that side. Here's another stripe on this side. And this side has um, flowers and birds. Here's another one here that has little tiny flowers on it. And then this side has trees and flowers. Uh, now to me, this pattern paper has a Nordic feel to it. Is that all of them? Um, I think this one I didn't show. This one has a little lattice pattern with white flowers. Um, it's really tiny. And then on this side, there are foxes. And I think this might go with another stamp set that Stampin' Up! has offered. Okay, I think that's all of them. Um, so today, we're going to uh, be using these two sheets. 
in our project. Let me set that out of the sun, out of the way. We're going to be using the bunny one and um, this floral print. And I think this kind of has a Nordic feel, definitely a European feel, um, maybe a Dutch feel, English, um, definitely Scandinavian uh, like Norway. I also want to show you the Country Blossoms embossing folder that comes with this suite. I'm not going to use it in today's project, but let me show you what it looks like once you put it through the embossing machine. Okay, let's open this up. Ooh, pretty. Look at that. Okay, so this is uh, what I would call the front. Here's the back. Oh, that's actually pretty too. I guess you could probably use this either way. I like it a lot. Pretty. Um, this is kind of the center section. I didn't really try to uh, put it in the center, but it looks like it lined up in the center really nicely. Of course, on this card, if I were to put this underneath here, um, that's going to be covered up. Most of that will be covered up. That is pretty cool, though. If you wanted to put this underneath, um, you could. But I think for today, I'm not going to add that on because I already have a lot of stuff going on but I wanted to show you what this looked like okay we're gonna use a uh, night of navy we're also going to be using a, a white card base um also this is another thing out of the catalog this is not a part of the um country in sweet collection but it's just something else called adhesive backed solid gems and this actually is a part of another suite um, the fresh as a daisy suite and we're going to be using the little boho blue gems on here um, but one more thing um, this is going to be the card that we make so we're going to be using the countryside in uh, stamps and the dies and then we're going to be using the teacup from the cup of tea stamp set and you can see the different pattern papers that we're going to use um, from the countryside in designer series paper and then the last thing which is right here in front of me which i didn't talk about is the two and three eighths circle punch and this is a part of a bundle but not the countryside in sweet this is a part um, of a bundle that goes with a stamp set um i think that is called circle sayings i think is the name of that bundle so let's go ahead and get started on this card Okay, to start off with, we're going to use our basic white thick cardstock, and we are going to be cutting it in half at five and a half inches. So when you have the half sheet, it's going to be five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and then we're going to score it. So I'm going to move my, my dark blade, my dark brown, and um, that's the actual blade. I'm going to move that out of the way. Then I'm going to score this at four and a quarter inches. This is with my scoring blade. Then I'm just going to go ahead and fold this in half with my bone folder to give that a really good crease. And then we're going to set that aside. Okay, and then we are going to get some um, Knight of Navy cardstock. And this is going to be the layer on top of the base card layer. So I'm going to cut that at five and a quarter. So I'm going to take a quarter inch off of uh, the main card, the main base card, I guess. And then we're going to trim that down to four. So when you layer that on, it's going to have a nice layer effect with a little border on it. Okay. Then while we're at this, we should probably go ahead and do um, the inside as well, which for the inside, I'm just going to do another piece of white cardstock and we're going to um, cut that the same as uh, the blue on the outside. So we're going to actually do a white on white on the inside and then we'll just do a little decorating of it. So that will also be five and a quarter and that will be five, four inches. Okay, and we'll do the decorating of that later and we'll adhere that inside later. So I'm gonna set that aside um, for right now. Okay, next on here, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, do the circle punch. And what I did is I used um, this side for 
the card and also the other side. So I'm going to punch two more circles out of here. And when I did this, you can see where the bunny is. I don't want the bunny's ears to get cut off. So I'm going to go like that. I move that over a little bit. It is nice that you turn this over when you cut it. So then you can see where you're cutting. Now, if I did this side, that would work too, except um, since I'm wanting to use both sides, then um, I, I'll do it this way. Now this way, if I turn it this way, this isn't really centered on here, which I'm not sure it really matters, but for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I, if I center it that way. Nope, that won't work. So it's gonna have to be like this. So I'm gonna move it over here a little bit. Um, so the blank space is kind of in the center. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna put this aside, get that out of the way. We'll set these up here. Okay, and next we're going to be stamping with this. Now, uh, when I first got this, I was thinking maybe I would want to cut this uh, between each layer. So instead of having just one stamp in the set, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six stamps. Um, and I still might end up doing that, but I thought before I take that drastic action to cut it, uh, that maybe I would try it out first and just see, um, just see how how it would go. Okay, so I'm gonna get out my Stamparatus, which unfortunately the Stamparatus is being discontinued, um, but I still like this hard surface, especially on tables that are hollow, which is what I'm working on. So it gives me a good um, surface to get a, a clean stamping on it. And on here, I'm going to get a piece of this. I am not gonna cut out the whole thing. If you can see here, I only have a few layers here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and let me move this. I'm gonna put this on here. And if this is gonna be here, because I don't need this whole paper to go down. If I go here, that's still gonna, yeah. And if it goes off a little, um, let me move this over. There's no reason why it has to be straight in the corner. If I put it here, this will be the line that's next to the stamping up image. And I'll just move this out because I'm going to be trimming this. Okay, so this is going to come over. This is going to stick on here. Can you see that? Kind of. Let me move this over a little so you can see it better. Okay, and now I'm going to take my Boho Blue brand new ink pad, full size. I'm so excited because I didn't have all the full size ink pads before. Now I do. Okay, so you're just going to ink that up. Then you're gonna push this over. Oh, and you know what else? Hmm, I don't know. Let me see, is that gonna work? Yeah, it will. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down. And what's nice about the Stamparatus is that you can re-ink it if it didn't turn out. See how that didn't completely ink up. So I'm gonna ink that a little bit more. Then I know I'm gonna press down more over on this side. There you go. Look at that. Looks great. Okay. So I'm going to move this aside. And again, do you see how this went off the paper? That's not a problem because I am going to be trimming this down. And it looked like that didn't even uh, get on here, but this is a nice surface that you can, you can easily clean with a wet wipe or a chamois. Okay. And so now I'm going to clean my stamp. Um, I actually prefer using the stamp and scrub. So I have this, this is a really old one. And um, so I'm, I, I added on here, clean on one side and dry on the other. So clean as in a verb, you're gonna clean it. And what I'm gonna do is just leave the stamp right on the um, plate for the Stamparatus. And then I'm gonna move this around here to clean it. Then I'm gonna move it here to dry it. There. That looks good, nice and clean. So I'm gonna set that aside, set this aside, put the magnet back on the Stamparatus. You don't wanna 
lose that. Next, let's go ahead and do some more stamping because then we're going to want to use the cut and emboss machine. Okay, so on here, what I'm going to do is do the little thank you. And so that is going to be from the cup of tea set. I'm just going to use the thank you from this. Thank you for your friendship. Okay, so there's two ways you can do that. You can um, do the Stamparatus if you want, or you can also just do a block. And so on here, um, do I have a sticky note? Well, if you have a sticky note, that would work. But this um, this post-it note cover-up tape would actually work too because the stamp is so narrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off a piece of this and I'm going to cover up the part I don't want to stamp. I'm only going to stamp the thank you part. So I'm going to cover this up. And you can just cover this up with a, with a post-it note easily. Um, this is just what I found first. <laughs> And so now what you're going to do is you're going to ink it up, but then you're going to take um, this tape off before you stamp it. So I'm going to just put this on here. Okay, and you can see that that inked part of that up. So I'm going to pull this off. I might want to use this again, so I'm going to just set it to the side. And now I'm just going to put it on here. And this isn't too serious as long as you don't put it right near the edge. I'm going to go down, stamp up. Okay, and that's okay. It's a little thick. Okay, that's a little thinner. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try again, and I'm going to try with the new Stampin' Write markers. And now these are a little bit different um, from what we've had in the past. It still has a thick brush tip on this side where the thick line is, and the thin line is over here. Okay, so this on this tip, this is what the brush tip looks like. And on the thin side, it looks a little different this year. Um, this is like a bullet point sticking out. There used to be more of a plastic tip to the edge, and now it's more like a bullet point. And I've also been told that these are not refillable, where the old ones, I believe, are refillable. So, okay, I'm going to use the brush tip here, and I'm just going to lightly brush over the letters here. And let's see how this is going to stamp. Put this over here so I can still uh, cut it out. Okay, that's not bad either. Okay, let me try this again. It's interesting because it's such a small, small stamp that I want it to be uh, really clear, but my ink pad is brand new, so that is quite wet. Mm, see, that's not bad, interesting. Okay, let me try one more time with the really juicy ink pad because it's brand new. So I'm going to cover up the part I don't want again. Okay, and this time I'm going to try to tap on here lighter. Okay, instead of a couple times, I'm only going to do it once. Okay, and let's see how that, oh, wait, remember you got to take off the little thing that you're covering up. Okay, and I'm going to be, try to be really light on here too. Oh, look at that. Interesting. Okay, well, which one? I think the first one actually was um, the best. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. It is readable. And I don't think that handmade cards need to be perfect. Now we're going to do some die cutting. I'm going to get out my machine for part of this. And part of it I already have done. All right, so the first thing that I am going to want to do is go ahead and do the little thank you. So I'm going to get the new dies. Okay, and so for here, I'm, I don't know if you can see that, okay, I want to go outside the stitched line. So if you compare that to the whole thing, I'm going to do the third one in. So I'm going to pull that off. Um, and I'm also going to want this little word sentiment die for with the little ribbon on the side. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here. And on here, you just have to, there, this is not a, a clear 
what am I saying? There's not a hole in the die, so you can't see through to line up your image. So we're just gonna have to do the best we can here. And if it doesn't turn out, then um, we'll do it again. And I'm also gonna get out some washi tape. Well, actually you can also use the, that other label, that post-it tape. Let me, let me get that. I'm gonna use that on here. Cause I think that does better at uh, not sticking if you have a problem sticking. Okay, let me get that where I think it's gonna go. It is kind of a, a little bit of a guesswork here. Okay. I'll get my other plate and I'm gonna put this through. Now this is going to wiggle the table. So close your eyes if you don't like shaking. Okay, let's see how that cut. Okay, that's not bad, not perfect. So you can go ahead and go with that if you want, or if you wanna try another one, you can try, you can do it again. So let me do another one here. And this is a good example too of when you're stamping, especially small stamps, you might wanna stamp them um, more than, than once. Let's see, let's try this one next. Let me try to center that and come down over that. And I can put this back on here. And this time I think I'm gonna turn it this way. And let's see if we can go ahead and cut this at the same time. So this one's going to go over around the edge of the stitch line there. Okay, and I'm gonna get the other piece of tape here, the label, the post-it tape. Let's try to get that more or less centered. Okay. All right, and also when you're doing a bigger um, die cut like this, it's better not to do it straight across like this. It's better to do it at an angle uh, that you might have um, less noise and breaking of the plate when you do it that way. Oops. Okay, so let me put this through again. Well, that still made noise. And maybe that's because this one was straight across. Again, even if with the small dies, maybe I should have curved that some. And it didn't break or anything. Just sometimes that noise is a little scary. Okay. Okay, so let's see how this turned out. Let me take that off. Okay, there you go, that turned out. And then this one turned out too. Again, that is a little tricky. Um, so the other thing that you could try, because that is not always the easiest to do, let's try cutting it out one last time. But this time we're just gonna do it on blank um, on the other side. And let me do it at an angle too. We'll see if it doesn't make as much noise or crack as much. And then we'll stamp it afterwards. There, oh yeah, see that did not crack as much. Okay, all right. So let's try stamping that. Now I'm gonna put this on that's centered on this line. Now I'm gonna take the thank you and I'm going to center that. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm gonna put the plate back in. I'm gonna set this down. So I'm gonna put on there. And now I'm going to ink this. Now when I ink this, I'm gonna use my Boho Blue Pad and let me get some more of the post-it cover up. Okay, so that is thank you goes there. So I'm going to cover that part up here. Okay, I didn't quite cover that all the way to the very edge, but I think I can keep the ink from hitting that much. So let's see if this is going to work. I'm going to take this off and let's 
Ugh, still not that great. Wow. Wow. Okay. I guess that just goes to show how much I rely on a hole being cut out on the inside of the outline die to be able to put the words where they need to be in the center. Okay, next we're going to do the teacup. Now, I already die cut this out just to save us some time. So I um, did this on the DSP and then I did this actually on more DSP, but it is a darker color on the back side. Let's see if I can find, actually, I think it's just the back side of this. Yeah. So what you're going to do is this goes right on here, but I don't want the leaves on here because this is so busy. So we need to trim that off and this is how we're going to do it. You need to get your paper snips and these are really good for detailed cutting. So we're going to start off here on the top. This is going to be the easiest part. So you're just going to line it up and cut that off. As you can see, it's pretty good there. Hopefully you can see that. Then I'm going to cut the next one, cut that off. And if it's not exactly perfect, again, it's not going to be that noticeable on the card. But you can always go back later and trim it a little more if you want. Now, this is going to be this one here. There's that. And then this one here. Okay, and then this one here is on the corner. So I'm going to go this direction for this one. And then I'm going to turn it and go down, line it up with the downstroke. Okay, there you go. So you can kind of see how that is so far. Um, now this, uh, we're going to do this one over here next. Now on this one, only do this one part because after this, it's going to get a little tricky. So we're skipping this leaf down here. We'll come back to it. On this one, this is a little tiny bit curved. So if you can kind of curve it a little, that would be good. Okay. And now for this one here, this is going to be tricky because the inside part of the handle we want, but how this leaf connects, we don't want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cut this, um, this part that's going up and down here for the inside of the handle or the edge of the cup. Don't cut that in here yet. Okay, I'm going to cut it off here on this side, the top of this leaf, and it's not going to matter. Um, this is just so I can get rid of that. Okay, and so now what you want to do is see how this line's curving down. You want to just continue that. Don't cut the top part, just cut right here, just this one little bit there. And so this is one piece that we need for the inside of the handle. Okay, and so now what we wanna do is cut the rest of this off, okay? So I'm gonna go like this and I'm going to, no, I think I'm gonna put my, see how I put my scissor underneath this part and now I put it up and now it's gonna get a smoother cut, yeah, okay. So you can see how that is, and then you can look and say, hmm, do I want to cut a little bit more or does it not matter? And let me show you the sample. Because if you look very carefully at this sample, let me get my take your pick tool right here. You might see this isn't perfect. Okay. Um, and right over here, you can't really see it, but it's not perfect either. So once you get this outline on uh, the design, it could be that the way I did this is just fine. But one thing that I need to remember, I forgot to get rid of this last little leaf down here. So that's the last thing that we're going to do. And again, I'm going to put my scissors up underneath, not um, down. You could do it either way, but I think this is a little bit easier. Well, no, you do however you want. I think I am going to stay on the top side. Okay, and then you're going to cut and this kind of has to be curved again. And then this last one is the trickiest. I'm gonna trim that just to get rid of it, okay? So this one, you have to kind of angle it this way, and then you also have to angle it this way, so you kind of make a corner cut. So I'm not gonna cut all the way through, I'm just gonna cut part way through, okay? Then I'm gonna turn this way, and I'm also gonna cut part way through, and we'll see if, I'm not sure they're gonna touch to come right off. Nope, I'm gonna need to do it a little bit more. And if you somehow cut this all the way through, 
I, you know, you can glue this down and I don't think it's going to show. But I am trying to be kind of precise here to this is kind of bending a little. There, is that going to come off now? Let me cut it a little more. And it's actually starting to tear just a little bit, but I have a fix for that too. Okay. When I did this in practice, this worked just fine, but that's okay because this doesn't always work. Oh, see that is really wanting to cut off there. Okay. Now this is how this looks. So this is actually a good thing because this can show you um, that it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And so what you can do is if you don't like the little white part here, for one thing, it might not show when it's on here. So if I put this on here, and you get all this on here, it's going to do a nice outline and that little white might not show. But if it does bother you, if you have a Knight of Navy, Navy marker, you can just fill that in. I do not have a Knight of Navy marker where I, at the location I'm at. So I'm actually just going to use the Boho Blue because that is still closer to the color than white. Do you see how even the Boho Blue just covered that up and you don't see it as much? Okay. And um, I think we're good to go. All right. So I'm going to glue this on. And don't forget this other little middle piece. And when I'm doing something really delicate or very narrow, I use my multi-purpose liquid glue, but I have put it in a smaller container because that's going to uh, have it come out the nozzle in a smaller amount. So what I'm going to do is use my take my pick tool, the little pointy part to hold down this because this is going to wiggle and I'm going to be, I'm putting little tiny drops, but I am putting them, you know, every, you know, probably less than every quarter inch just because I don't want this to come off. There, did I do it all the way? Okay. So now when you put it on, try to just put it on a little at a time. Um, I'm going to get my reversible tweezers because I love them, especially for um, little delicate pieces like this. Okay, so I'm going to put this on. I'm not going to set it all the way down. I'm going to do one little bit at a time, and I'm going to try to make sure that it goes straight to the edge. And if it doesn't, then um, you can see how I'm kind of stretching that out to make it work at the edge. Okay, so if it's not straight to the edge, I'm going to pull that up. And when I can't see the white on the outside, I'm going to push down. So I'm going to turn this around so I can see this a little bit better from over here. And you can, and it's not like I'm actually stretching it, but kind of. And we're going to do the same thing that we did. Um, if you do see some little white here, you can keep pushing it up. There, see how that's kind of going up a little bit. But if there's a little bit that's still white, you can do the same thing that we did on the other piece with um, your boho blue marker. You can just add a little bit of blue to the edge and then you're not going to see it. See right there. So I'm going to just take my marker and I'm just going to go around the edge. And this isn't even the really dark color Knight of Navy. But you're not gonna, you're gonna notice it less. I guess I could even go around part of this where you can see, where you cannot see the white. Just to make it a little crisper, I guess. But there, what I was really worried about was that corner, okay? All right, now you don't want to forget the little tiny piece here. So I need to put some glue on that. And 
and then you'll do the same thing. I'm going to set that down here. I'm just going to adjust that. So it's over the edge there. And there you have your little teacup. Oh, I just love it. I really, really like it. Okay, so let that sit for a second to dry. We're also going to do a little rectangle square. This is from the stitched a rectangle squares. Is that what that um, die cut set is? This is a retiring set. Um, and so I'm gonna angle that as I put it through. Yeah, that went through without too much noise or cracking. Okay, so I'm gonna get that. That's I think that's the last piece that we need to prep. Okay, this is kind of messy. Let me turn this over. Oh yeah, this looks a little better to get this put together. All right, so we are going to start off with our first layer that's gonna be on the white card base. We're going to put this down here. This is going to be down at towards the bottom. I want to make sure we have enough room. I'm going to have um, one circle over here up towards the edge. And then this one, oh wait, I'm going to flip this because remember this one's not centered. This is the one that is a little more centered. So I'm going to put this bunny over here in this corner. And then on this one, I'm going to put this one, see how the blank is in the center. And this one I'm gonna put down a little lower and this I want centered. So if I make sure down here that this is centered, I think it needs to go here. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half, a little over. Okay, so that's centered. So that means that this main line here, I want to have centered. So that'd be one, two, three, three and a half, a little more. Over here, it'd be one, two, three and a half. Nope. So that means this needs to come this way a little bit more. Okay, so now it's one, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. Okay, so a little bit more. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the center like that. And I want this like this, a little lower, this one a little higher. I think maybe I'll move this out just a little bit more. And that's kind of at the edge. And this is down here. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna do it. So um, now to keep it in the spot, I'm going to use some press and seal. And I did do a video on using press and seal, so I will link that in. Um, the, the links. And so this is just a little piece of press and seal. I'm just going to set it down ever so slightly just on these three pieces. That's where I'm going to push. Okay. Cause right now I don't need it to be, um, on the blue. Okay. So now I'm going to just pull this up. See how that stays together. Whoops. It still stayed together, even though I was about ready to drop it. Okay. And now I'm just going to put some little tape on here to tape the three pieces together. And now I'm gonna glue these. Well, actually you can take the press and seal off now. And when you take it off, you do wanna be careful. Um, I think this should be good for the white, but because of the pattern paper is a little more narrow, I would say take this off carefully. And also instead of pulling up on the paper, I would pull back on the paper. And if you're holding this down, it's gonna be less likely that it's going to want to rip anything off. And I've used this piece of press and seal a couple of times, it still lasts. Um, so you don't really need that much, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do with the multi-purpose glue is you can see that this is just stuck where the tape is. So I still want to glue these together. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just glue a little bit, put a little glue on here. Fold that down and then this piece too. Just go around the edge here a little bit. Push that down. Okay, and then I'm gonna be ready to glue this on here. So now I'm gonna take the liquid glue again and just kind of go around the edge. A little bit in the middle. All right, and then I'm gonna be able to put this on. Okay, and I'm gonna put this up here if I have this in the corner. This in the corner, then it's gonna end up being centered. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna set that down. Okay, next we're gonna do um, the middle part. So this is gonna be here. This is gonna be covering that up. It doesn't totally cover up this inside, but it that doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I'm gonna raise this up on Stampin' Dimensionals. So if someone inspects it carefully, they're gonna see that uh, underneath. And it's just gonna be another uh, detail, another level of detail. So I wanna turn this over the right way because I like the little stitched look, but I don't want it to be upside down, which I guess would not be the end of the world, but I do like it the way it looks on the one side. Okay, so I'm going to put this on, center, make sure you are really careful with the Stampin' Dimensionals. You can kind of lift it and adjust it just a little bit. Okay, so now let me take my thank you. And we're going to glue that on with some glue. Use my reverse tweezers again. Let's put that on here. In the center. There. Okay, now we're going to put on the teacup. And I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals again for that. You could use large Stampin' Dimensionals. I don't have any uh, close by right now, so I'm just going to use little ones. Okay, now for doing the handle, what I'm gonna do is cut some strips off the side. You'll see that there's an edge here, so I'm just gonna cut little thin strips like that, and then I'm going to turn it around and uh, when I cut strips like this, I find it's easier to pull them off if I pull away from myself. Then I'm gonna set one there and I'm gonna pull the next one and I'm gonna put the other one right over there. And you can do as many Stampin' Dimensionals as you want. Uh, this is enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and center this above the thank you. And let me look to see if that looks straight. Yeah, that looks straight. Maybe I will put it down just a little bit. Come on, baby, come off. Okay, let me hold it this way so I can put it down. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, and there's the front of our card. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna do is if you have a white gel pen, and what I just happen to have here is a Posca pen. So I'm just going to put um, some little steam curls here to make that look nice and hot. Okay, so now you can set that aside for a second. And we're going to get out our card base. And we are going to get the piece that is going to go on the inside. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I just have a piece of this that was extra from when I cut out the teacup. Tea cup. So I think I'm just gonna take a little tiny skinny piece of this to put there. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. I won't need the whole thing. Now I'm gonna turn it sideways and I'm wanting this to match up on here with this. And this is uh, five and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do, go ahead and cut this 
at a little more than that so I can cut off the edge and it looks like it'll just barely make it before it is not um, before it's <laughs> gonna cut, cut into where I cut off yeah okay by the time we have this glued on then um, we can glue on the front and we'll just about be done okay so I'm gonna put glue on here almost to the edge and that's the side that's going to hang off just slightly. So let me put this here. And we'll just put this at the very bottom. Put it along the edge. There. You can kind of slide that around just a little bit. All right. So now what I can do is just trim off this extra and then for sure it will be the right size. There. Okay, so now we're going to glue this on the inside. this so it will just have um, a little quarter inch well really less than that around the edge one eighth around the edge there and it will give it a little bit of strength okay and now this is the way it's going to open up that'll be the inside so now I'm going to glue the top there and then we'll be done so let me glue this on here Sometimes I like to try to get a little tiny piece right in the corner to keep those corners down. All right, so now I'm going to put this here. Again, this is going to have a little white border. This one eighth of an inch. There we go. All right, there we go. And there is um, our card. Oh, I forgot my little gems. Let me get those on. Okay, that is these adhesive back solid gems. That's what those are called. Wow, those are not sticking um, to the clear plastic that much. Maybe it's easier to use my the pointy side. Okay, so I'm gonna just put that in the space between the tag, the white tag and the edge of the blue. I never know what to use for these, but this is coming off super easy. Um, sometimes I use this pointy end sometimes I use um, this now see this is sticking out more so um, remember to uh, loosen this so it doesn't keep coming out um, and then put the lid on so it will be good for next time okay so there is our card here's the first one that I did you can compare how they turned out and so I think I'm gonna really love using uh, this set with the die I haven't put it on a magnet sheet yet. Okay, here's this uh, one piece. That I, I love my new colors. Um, I think I might do a video later of showing all the new colors because I got all new ink pads with all the colors. So um, I think that might be a future video or live now that I've done my first live. Now, the last day to order from our last annual catalog, the 22-23 annual catalog, will be the 1st of May. Okay, after that, you won't be able to order um, from this catalog anymore. This is last year's catalog. Uh, so, the last day is May 1st uh, to um, order from that. And then, you can order from the new catalog starting on May 2nd. And that will be available at 3 a.m. Mountain Time on the 2nd of May. Please look at the link and you can shop with me on Stamping Up. And I do have some good hostess perks this month. And uh, you can check those out in the description as well. You can get free stamped cards from me. You can get in a drawing for this cane weave embossing folder. It'll be a brand new one in the packaging. This is just the one that I'm using. 
um, you can do all that just for spending $25 with me. And then if you spend $50 with me, then you'll get some free samples of five ribbons and you'll get 12 inches of each one of those five ribbons. So I hope you will um, look that up. My website is lisagoodell.com. I have a blog there. And um, also just please like and subscribe and click the bell to um, get notifications of when I go live on my YouTube channel because I did do one live so far and I plan to be doing more of those. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.